You came down, and the mountains trembled before you. In the midst of our own encounters with uncertainty and upheaval, and our longings for deliverance, Jesus calls to us, Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. We, we wait, wait as people surprised again and again by God, God, God who shakes us out of our complacency and raises us up to the work of the kingdom of all our homes. We light this candle as a sign of our shocking hope. May we stay awake to God's <coughs> excuse me, activity in the world as we wait in expectation that even now God is with us, working to restore us to the fullness of life with God and one another. Amen. Now we're going to turn to 2090 in the faith we sing, and we're going to sing the first verse of like the Advent candle. Faith we sing, number 2090. <coughs> um, oh, there's a little, little, little oh, one. Oh, actually, I see one here, but, you know. All right. Sunday the 10th. Is that okay with you, Crystal? Yep. Should have checked with Crystal. <laughs> yeah, it would be good. But, well, part of that reason is we're caroling on the 17th. Right, and right. if we did that, we'd have church, we'd have meeting, we'd run home, we'd come back. So this gives us a little time in between. So if you didn't hear before, we're caroling on the 17th, that Sunday afternoon. That's meeting, <coughs> meeting here at the church at 3 p.m. We're going out to carol to some of our shut-ins here, then we're coming back here and having some hot dogs and some goodies and singing Christmas carols right here in our church. So, good time, and it's open to everybody. I'm going to be start splashing that around on Facebook and around. So, so yeah. please feel free to invite anybody and everybody. Yeah, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring everybody. Um, chicken and biscuits, next Wednesday, coming up. You can always use help. Just letting you know. Gene is out there doing um, carrots right now. I'm not sure. And, no. Oh, <laughs> Betty Lou's got orange fingers. She's been doing carrots all the time. I'm waiting for a rabbit. I'm waiting for a rabbit to walk in behind her. <laughs> and Marie Louise spent last week baking up a storm, so we have a bunch of desserts in the freezer. We're good with that, but we'll always take donations from. Um, an approved bakery, a store, or a kitchen that is approved by the health department. 
to sell food. We can take anything from them. <coughs> anything else coming up? I have a bunch. Oh, good. <laughs> so December 12th is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. 6.30 is the winter concert at school. Um, Pre-K to 12. Um, the 20th, the kids will be caroling around town. They're doing it differently. Other people took it over. I had to relinquish some things. I was getting overwhelmed. So other people took it over and they're splitting the groups pre-K two and then three through six. So I don't know who's going to what locations, but what's the date of the one at school? Twelfth. Tuesday the twelfth. Um, and that was that will run from I believe they're gonna carol from twelve to two around town. And then Thursday, the twenty first, we're singing at the meal site. The senior meal site. I'm bringing my kids um, mm -hmm. one, two, and three down to sing. They love that. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <coughs> the twenty first. Kelly changed it because we don't have school the 22nd. So she was going to contact everybody and let them know. That's going to be the Christmas. Yeah, that'll be your Christmas dinner is the 21st. She was going to change it because we don't have school, so we wouldn't be able to come. Good. That's great. Anything else coming up? That's it for me. No? I, I, I just happened to notice, and this is... Steve, is our ceiling falling down up there? Just a little bit. Okay. A little bit. A little bit. Don't worry, Alice, it's not on over your head. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's probably been like that. I just haven't. Yes, noticed. it has been like that. Um, <laughs> it has been. Don't so so All right, now, now I'm going on a tour. When I was growing up and, and young in church, um, I could tell you how many panels we had in our church ceiling in the sanctuary. I'd like to report that I don't know here, mm -hmm. which means I'm not staring at the ceiling, counting them as I well, was as a right. child. Well, that's right. Take your touch. <laughs> yes, but as a child, I could tell you how many. I could also tell you at what time the light would hit. Jesus is, he had like a halo. And at what time during service, it always It hits. usually does that one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I could tell you. Well, anyway, mm -hmm. When the sun comes out, so whichever. All right, if we have no other announcements, um, I'm going to go on to our opening prayer. You'll find that in your bulletin. God of justice and peace, from the heavens you rain down mercy and kindness, that all on earth may stand in awe and wonder before your marvelous deeds. Raise our heads in expectation that we may yearn for the coming day of the Lord and stand without blame before your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I had one more thing that I forgot. Perfect. <laughs> um, I got an email from Pastor Mike Terrell oh, this week. Oh, nice. And he wrote a children's book. Um, Stanley the Stink Bug Goes to School is the name of it. So he sent me the press release and everything, and I just thought I would share that. Oh, that's great. He's, nice. he's in Watertown now. Is it available like um, Amazon? He said Amazon. Oh, that's what the press release said, a whole bunch of different places. So. Oh, that's very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of follow him and his friends with me on Facebook. Yeah. This has been coming for a while. He's been working on it for quite a while. Yeah. Very nice. He used to come and read for a morning program all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah, he did. I told him, I said, I can't wait to get a copy of it. <laughs> Is it something we that Alice could have at the library, too? It's a children's book, yeah. Okay. I think we need it at the library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So our hymn, our next hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And you'll find that on page 211 in your hymnal. Oh, we're only going to do verses 1, 2, and 4. That is correct. Otherwise, we're going to be here to call my phone. Right. <laughs>
only sing Christmas carols once a year. You know? <laughs> you can sing them in July and nobody will see them. Yes, we're not going to sing them in July. Yeah, hey, they never know. Because <laughs> uh, I'm sure they our traveling going. gospel person is going to do Christmas in July for this, this year. Okay. Or is it July? Yes, I guess it's coming in July. So mm -hmm. We've already ten and we got that set up. So Tam and Renee will be back with Christmas this year. <laughs> and she has a new Christmas album. I think it's out already. So who has some praises this morning? Me, me. <laughs> okay. Okay, I have a few. Um, first off, there's a paint and sip and speculated today at the lemon tree. My daughter's coming home to go with me. My daughter-in-law's coming up to go with me. And my buddy Lori is going. My Should daughter, I warn Heidi? I already did. <laughs> <laughs> She'll love it. And, but my other daughter-in-law, Lacey, was supposed to go, and she called yesterday. She's got that nasty cold virus that's going yeah, around. Yeah. So I told her to keep it home. I did not want her to come. Um, another one is, I'm from Fonda, and the Fonda Fultonville Batter Festival football team this year, for the first time in their history, 57 years, made it to the state finals. Wow. And this was just an amazing thing because they're not that big a school compared to Wells. They're huge. Yeah. But, but they're not. They're not a big school. They have, you know, like maybe 500 in nine through 12. So Bob and I went down to the golf course last night, had dinner, and they and watched it. They lost, but the boys put up a really good fight. It was just so exciting to see them. Uh, the quarterback's only a freshman. And so many people went to Syracuse to support these kids. It was really great. So praises to all the work that parents put in and coaches put in and the school put in just to, to keep these boys going, not only with their talent and what they were able to do, but the support they got. And there were dinners thrown for them and just a lot of activity. It was great to see. And yes, they is. also have had to give up their name. Yep. They're the Braves. Yep. So this was the last football game ever played by the Braves. And I forget what they're going to be, some, something. We're, we're officially the Wells Wildcats now. Yeah. That's what we want. They're going to be the Valley... Something. Valley Hawks? Or, yeah, that's it. I yeah, think. they're going to be the Valley Hawks. Which, which okay, is whatever. Yeah, it's a crazy world. It is a very oh, crazy yeah, world. Yeah. But they're, Believe me. So it was just school, really, older children went there. it was something for them to get to this level at the end of uh, the era of being the Braves. Yes, yeah, so, it was. Yeah. And football is a big thing in fun. Oh, yeah. It is the thing. My, uh, my boys didn't play football, but they played basketball and, yeah. and baseball. Right? <laughs> they did very well there. So. Yeah, sports is very important. <laughs> I just wanted to comment on that. I come from Corin, and we used to have the Corin Tomahawks. It needs to be two tomahawks, mm -hmm. but on the gym floor there was an, a Mohawk Indian. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not the core of tomahawks anymore. In fact, mm -hmm. on an e it's something. It has something to do with an ego. I can't remember, but on one of the emails I got was that the the general public was told they weren't allowed to wear the core of tomahawk sweatshirt. That just gets the dander right up in me. Yeah. yeah, we're I not allowed to. I graduated in 67. We had, you know, we weren't politically correct. Yeah, we're not allowed to wear any of them. And, and the Native clothes. Americans, I think, are very proud to share this heritage. I'm Native American, and anybody tells me I can't display my heritage, right. they're probably going to be in serious <laughs> trouble. You know? I, I just refuse yeah. to cable down to what they're asking. <clears throat> Won't happen. Yes, yeah, so it's the noisy people that get hurt, but the general. General people, like Gary said, they, they find it an honor to be honored. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. You better absolutely. believe it. I know. My grandmother was full blooded Sioux Indian. My grandfather was full blooded French Canadian. And I'm very proud of both of them. Sure. 72 years they were married. Yeah. Yeah. And Grandpa had 37 stitches on his head from a cast iron frying pan when he went out and got drunk and came home to Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> God bless us anyway. All right, we, do, we uh, digress here. So. <laughs> How about some other phrases? I have a phrase. <coughs> Excuse me. About a month ago, my sister Carol called me, and she was pretty upset, as understandably they, and the doctors had told her that she had cancer in her lung, and 
she was, uh, of course, all worried about dying and everything. And I, we talked for two hours on the phone, and I said, look, number one, uh, it's up to the Lord when we go. Number two, you believe in him, and you pray, and the end result is always good. And 394 people prayed for her on her Facebook page and sent things to her. Yesterday, I was coming in the house, the phone was ringing, and I answered it, it was her. Now, she lives in Texas. And she told me that they have done extensive testing, three biopsies, I don't know, <coughs> ultrasounds, all kinds of stuff, MRIs. With the prayers and God's will, there is no cancer in her lungs. Praise God. And she says that, in her belief, and mine also, it's because of our Lord and the people that stepped up to pray for her mm -hmm. and the well wishes she's got. So yeah. they're monitoring everything real close. She does have an infection in the nodules in her lungs, but they're pretty certain they can fix that. So that was some really good news. Praise yeah. yeah. God. Uh, I was very happy to hear that from her. Mm -hmm. And I have one more month to go, and my cancer to claim will be dormant. So, with that being said, I, I pray every day that I can go for another 25 years. <laughs> and Steve, I wanted to report on Azalea for us. Azalea goes for a scan on Tuesday. If this scan is clear, after seven years of treatment, they will consider her cured. God bless her. Yeah. So, up the prayers for Azalea for a clinic scan on Tuesday. And this, this little one, she's just our miracle. She is God's miracle because she never should have made it through this cancer. And clear scan and she will be considered cured. Awesome. Yeah, so Tuesday. I'll report next Sunday how she makes out. Awesome. I went to a meeting. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, Monday. Bonnie is going to take me to my new eye doctor, who is the one that's supposed to do my cataract surgery, hopefully. After the paperwork, and a lot of you have seen the paperwork you have to do with, it's enough to kill us. Anyway, I appreciate prayers. Absolutely. Because I think I can play again. You're always in my prayers. It would be nice uh, <coughs> to have been able to see the music Friday night instead of hoping I was seeing it right. You're, pretty, you're doing a pretty good job of thinking for it. Right? Oh, I did, I did. I did. We did a really good job, but the two churches are not going away, but that is. So I, uh, I was starting to say I went to a meeting on Wednesday <coughs> over in Lake George with uh, several other uh, global Methodist pastors. So we're in the loop now. We're, we're moving forward. Soon I'll be able to consecrate these things myself, these elements. These are, we got fresh elements consecrated by uh, Reverend Patty over there, so who led the meeting, and she is involved in the worldwide global ministry, by the way. She's leading a bunch of women in, in that worldwide global. As well as our Bishop Webb, who was leading this district and good chair of the United States and other parts of the world in this ministry. So we're, we're uh, involved in a great, uh, great bunch of believers. Nothing, nothing to say against other people that believe different, but we have chosen to go this, this method. So anyway, we're moving forward. So praise God for that, and uh, things that are moving, you want to tell us what happened with the state? Yes, actually, I, I was going to say, we received a copy of the petition from the United, the United Methodists needed to do a petition about transferring the property and, and letting us out to the denomination. And they do that, and it goes to the state, then the state will sign it, do, well, they'll do an order, sign it, and then we're good. So they are moving along because we received the petition. Betty Lou and I had to go and sign some witness forms for it. We did that. It went to our attorneys in Florida, and by now it's already back 
to the United Methodist minister or attorneys. So it is moving along. I don't know if it'll be before the first of the year. The courts move really slow this time of year, but it's soon. We, we, it is progressing, so it, it's a praise. Maybe we'll get a Christmas present. I would be a nice Christmas <laughs> present. Would that be nice? <laughs> So that's great. That's it great. Is. Things are things are doing well. We're small, but we're mighty here. So, mm -hmm. so we, we do what's where God leads us. So how about some uh, concerns? What's on your hearts this morning? We have some uh, concerns for loved ones. We shared a little bit about some cancer and some, some things, but uh, what else is out there? I have some concerns, Steve. As a paramedic for many, many years, I, I got to know a lot of people in Fulton, Hamilton. Of course, I grew up here. Montgomery, Saratoga, and Herkimer counties. In the last couple of weeks, we have lost three people in Northville. Uh, John Syra was a Gloversville Police Department captain, worked for the department 30 years. Him and I worked a lot of cases together. Phenomenal, phenomenal guy. Diagnosed him two months ago with cancer, passed away within less than two months. Uh, a while ago, I asked him for prayers for a lady that her 28-year-old daughter passed away, Bridget Borgia. Bridget was 49 years old. Mother went in to wake her up the other morning for work, found her passed away in her bed, 49 years old. They don't have an explanation as to why she passed away. I'm sure they did an autopsy. I just have not heard and the third one was a girl that I grew up with here in Hamilton County, Kim Bellafance, passed away the other day. So we need to put prayers out for all three families that are grieving big time. Northville's been hit hard the last couple of weeks. Uh, and they're all phenomenal people. I know them all very well. Uh, so we need to put some prayers out for the people, the families, and loved ones. Thank you for sharing. Lots of people have made special prayers, especially this time of year. It's difficult. Anybody else? Keep Ann in our prayers. Yes. Ann and Elsie. Yes. Alice said she went to pick up Ann this yeah. morning and she just wasn't good enough. To yeah. Me. I tried to call Ann yesterday <coughs> and uh, she doesn't pick up. And Alice told me the message from Ann is don't call her. <laughs> 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 Anyways, she, she needs to rest. So that's, that's the thing. It's hard to talk when you can't. Yes. You can't. Yes. yes. And this weather doesn't help. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it does not help at all. On the No Crystal House mom. She's doing okay. She, I was supposed to have dinner with her last night. I made a pizza, but she said she had a stiff neck. So. <laughs> so, but other than that, she's doing okay. But this weather is not good. No, it's yeah. not. Yeah. Not enough. Uh-uh. Oh, and um, Rick Abraham. I don't know if you know Rick and Julie Abraham, they live up from Maine. He had his appendix rupture this past week. Oh, no. And yeah. he just came home from the hospital, I think, yesterday. They had to do surgery and stuff. So prayers <laughs> for Julie, who was taking care of Rick. But they have animals, and, yeah. you know, it's, it's just it's a true. tough time of year to have anybody laid up. So prayers for, for Rick's recovery. She said that he's very tired, but, but he's home. So... You know, that's a good thing, but for them, as, as Rick re recovers and Julie picks up a lot of slack, and their son Logan is, is being a godsend, is coming and helping them a lot. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Mm -hmm. So for Rick and Julie, and Penny, who comes to church here sometimes, Rick's her son-in-law. Julie's her daughter. Speaking of Penny, Pastor Penny, I was supposed to be at that meeting with us, and she's very ill, so she asked her prayers for her. And uh, I would ask her prayers for Sandy, our third member of the remnants. Oh, she, yeah, she's very did. ill yeah. with RSV. Yeah. Oh. Very, very ill. So uh, some, some prayers for them, please. Sandy. And prayers for Timmy Hahn. He's home, and he's doing pretty good, I guess. I see him out and he was doing a little plowing and I said to myself, oh, you better, better not do that. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. You aren't going to be able to tell Tim no. I was no. going to say he's a hard <laughs> one to keep down. Yeah. Hard <coughs> to keep down. He's an awful good boy. 
<laughs> all right, this is what church is all about, remembering those that we need to remember. Remember prayers, give thanks for what God gives us. So, so let's go to the Lord. Prayers right? for you, Steve, when, when you fell this week. Oh, I did fall. But, but God is faithful. God is good. I thought I was going to have to tell you all that I wasn't going to be able to run out and back to the cars this week. But I, I, I woke up uh, this morning with very little pain at all. I fell, and I didn't think I got hurt until I woke up the next morning yeah. and moved my leg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I hobbled around for a couple of days with very painful lump. So, but that was good. So that's a praise. Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we do praise you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you give us each and every day. We've listed a bunch of praises. We've got lots to give, to give the glory and praise to you for. And we, we certainly appreciate it. And we don't, we don't uh, realize it enough. But Lord, to you be the glory for it all. Lord, we've listed some, uh, a bunch of concerns this morning as well. We thank you for working in the hearts and lives of those that we've mentioned in our lives so we, we can remember those people and do what you need us to do for them. Lord, we ask you to be with them all that we've mentioned this morning and even those that we haven't mentioned as well. With their friends and family, with everybody that we've mentioned every, every week here, the leaders of the countries, the churches, the towns, the cities, and us and our families, the school kids, the, ch ch the teachers, Lord, be with them all, especially in this season. Be with us as we go into Advent, remembering you and trying to go closer to you. Lead us, Lord. Speak to us. Speak to our minds and our hearts. Draw us closer to you. Be with those in the sanctuary that have special concerns that they don't want to mention. But we know, Lord, that you're here with us for all of us. And we come to you with that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do us not to temptation, but to the rest of evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for our chance to get back. <coughs>
You want me to take the change? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let's turn to number 196 in our hymnal. Come on along. <coughs> It probably is not, but here it is okay. <laughs> here it is definitely okay. <laughs> That's asking the snow gods for snow. <laughs> we have less ice. through the Bible completely in, what, three years, I guess it was, or whatever. So, uh, the word Advent comes from Latin, and the word Adventus, which means arrival. It is a season encompassing the four Sundays, including weekdays, before Christmas. Four Sundays, it all starts before Sunday, fourth Sunday before Christmas, includes the weekdays. Remember, Lent did not include Sundays. There's a difference there. Lent was 40 days without the Sundays added. Advent is a period of preparation and celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas 
but it's also preparation for the second coming of Christ. Second coming. It's a season of candlelight, reflection, and expectation. I always like to come to those churches that are lit by candles. You like that? Maybe we'll maybe we'll celebrate Christmas morning service with candles. The season's dates vary from year to year. For example, last year it began on Sunday, the 20th, November 27th, and ended on Saturday, December 24th. It always ends on Christmas Eve. This year starts today, which is the third, and it ends on the 24th, which is the night before Christmas. It's always four Sundays before Christmas. Each Sunday has a traditional meeting, and prayers and readings are assigned to it. We heard the first reading this morning, and our candle, our first pan candle was lit there. It's a candle of hope. But then come love, joy, and peace. The two candles that are purple represent the first love, uh, hope and love. The third candle that's lit would be the pink one. And that's representing the joy, preparation and joy for the coming of the Christ child. And the fourth is also the purple candle of peace. And then the fifth, the center candle, is the Christ candle. And that's only lit on Christmas Eve, which we will celebrate Christmas Eve on Christmas, or on the day before Christmas, on the Sunday 24th here. And we'll light that Christ candle at that time. There's also uh, symbolic things that happen in the church with colors. Alice changed this to purple. Purple or blue, or this is a blue purple or whatever, represent Advent. So that's the Advent set. Christmas turns to white and so on. We won't go through all the colors now, but these, the, the colors are, are uh, used in celebrating uh, in, in such items as stoles or vestments, altar clothes, Parliaments and other church decorations. You can use them in all different ways. So maybe we we'll want to think about that at some time and have some other decorations, color appropriate for the seasons. So that's the end of my housekeeping message this morning. So it's always nice to talk about a few things that are tradition in the church. It's not all about tradition, but tradition is nice. Tradition is nice. So now let's get back to the subject. What is truth? What is truth? Does anybody recall where they've heard that question asked before? I asked Gary, he didn't know, but I told him the answer. So anybody else know? <laughs> I was close to <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let me refresh your memory. After Jesus was taken into custody, he was brought before Pontius Pilate. And we find this scripture in the Gospel of John, chapter 18. If you want to turn to 683, you can see it there. 683 in your pew Bible, John chapter 18, starting in verse 36. You start. It says, Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to present my, prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are king then, Pilate said. Jesus answered, You say of my king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the earth is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? I retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews and gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at a time on the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? <laughs> they shouted back, no, not him. He was Barabbas. Barabbas. What do you hear there in this passage? You heard what's truth. For me, I hear and see truth about the world and human nature today. Not just then, but also today. I see people quick to jump to conclusions and join in a mob mentality. You see that today? You see that here? I see leaders being lobbied 
like they are today. And looking out for their own glory and popularity. Pilate spoke those words, what is truth, and then he went out again to the Jews, gathered there and said, I find no basis to charge them. But what did he do? He got lobbied by the people, shouting at them, insisting. And Pilate gave in to the request, and an innocent man, Jesus, was sentenced to death, a cruel death. That was effective lobbying, wasn't it? As we sit here in church today, embarking on Advent Journey 2023 to the celebration of our Savior's birth, and also anticipating the return of Jesus as King and Judge between the sheep and the goats, we need to decide for ourselves what truth will mean to us. What's it mean for us? Will we draw near to Jesus on his journey, or will Jesus be drowned out by the cries of the world around us? Let me share another scripture with you, and I'll ask you to turn in your Bibles to page 1578. 1578, Mark 13, 24 through 37. I invite you to follow along, like I said. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer's near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not my words. My words will never pass away. The day and the hour is unknown. But about the day or the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on your guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. We do not know. We don't know. Jesus didn't need to know. It's like a man going away and he leaves his house and he puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells one at, the, one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows or dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch, watch. Jesus promised he's coming back, didn't he? He doesn't break his promises. Will we be ready, or will we get hot off guard? We know we will be celebrating his birth in a few weeks, but what about his return? Will we, will we be ready for that? As the scripture said, we don't know when or at what time Jesus will come back. Are you worried you won't be ready? Will there be enough time to prepare? Time is something we often obsess it and worry about, so much that we are burdened down with fear of not having enough time to get it all done. Is that true for you? I've seen that be true for a lot of cases. We rush to get it all done, and then we think we have to fix everything and make everything perfect. We're preparing our church for, for a Christmas celebration. We're doing special things, making it look better. We prepare. But do we really need to? Do we really need? Do we remember the story of Mary and Martha when Jesus visited? Mary sat at Jesus' feet, listening to his teaching. But Martha was too busy cleaning up and, and to listen to Jesus. What Jesus said. What is important? Is it the preparation and getting, getting ready, or is it just listening to Jesus? What's your support? 
I suggest we need to use our time wisely, but not stress about life. We need to do the best we can and not be worried about time or about everything being perfect. We need to be more like Jesus in everything we do. We need to take time to listen and realize what Jesus would want us to do. Solomon said there's a time for everything and how true that is. Many of us have lived and experienced life long enough to have seen much. We've also seen history repeat itself, and we're seeing, seeing it even now as we sit here in the United Methodist, not in the United Methodist, but the Methodist, global Methodist church, soon to be in reality. We're seeing it happen. Time is repeating. Things are repeating. History is repeating. Do you realize we're all miracles here, born as children of man and woman, because we're not planned it that way? We're here, born with flesh and blood, and sitting in this church because God planned it. God planned our time for us. We are on His schedule. He planned our lives before they happened, and He has a plan for us all through eternity. That's a period that none of us can fathom or measure. Do we have enough time and eternity to get it all done? It doesn't even matter. I think not. Again, I remember what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 1. He said everything is meaningless. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from their labors? What do people gain from all the labors in which they toil under the sun? What do we gain from what we toil? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. Perhaps it does, but I'm not sure. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises from. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north, round and round it goes, returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To, 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 to the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are worrisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough seeing nor the ear enough hearing. What has, been, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun. That's what Solomon said. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was already, it was here already long ago. It was here before our time. Well, now, there, are, there are new electronics that are out every day, so it doesn't necessarily forget direct, directly fit in our world today. There's new things, but the, but the uh, principle behind things doesn't change. No one remembers the former generations, or even those that will come, will not be remembered by those who follow them. Wisdom is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel, in Jerusalem, I applied my mind to study and to explore my wisdom, all that was said under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I've seen all things that are done under the sun, all of them meaningless, but chasing after the wind. What is crooked cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I said to myself, look, I have increased in wisdom more than anyone who ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned that this too is a chastening after the wind. Of course, with much wisdom comes much sorrow. That's a pretty deep statement, but it's true. With much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more knowledge, the more grief. We could get discouraged and depressed by hearing all that, but it is the truth. Let's face it. We can't fix everything, and we don't have to. That's the truth. 
We live in a universe where God, our creator, is in control, and he can handle all things. As he sees what is needed, he provides, and he removes what isn't working. Sorry, Marty, I'm running a little late. That's okay. So he removes what isn't working. He gives, and he takes away. To him, time is irrelevant. He created it, and he controls it. He can make the days longer or shorter if needed. He gives us life in the flesh as he sees fit. And he takes with him, he takes us with him beyond our earthly bodies when he deems it's time for us to move on. Now it's time for us to draw nearer to God in this time of Advent. <coughs> we don't need to think about the physical time. We just need to be aware of what God is doing for us and around us. We need to be in tune with what he would have us do for others while we're here in the flesh. We need to be in tune with God and not worry about everything else happening around us. It's just noise. We don't need to worry about not having enough time. We don't need to be perfect in getting everything done and spotless. We just need to be more like Jesus all of the time. When he comes, he will be, we will be amongst those that are not tossed into the fire. As we leave today, prepare for Jesus' coming. Let me leave you with the assurance that we don't need to worry about tomorrow. If we do what's right today. Yes, Jesus will be back. But for those of us who are doing what we're supposed to be doing, it doesn't matter. It's not the end of time for us. The sands of our hourglass are not running down. It will be just a change of venue. It's not for us to worry. It is for us to worry about spreading the word to those that haven't heard. I've, I've said often before, though, the enjoyment of our retirement is out of this world. Our retirement is out of this world. I know I'm looking forward to what lies ahead as far as myself, for the sad bed season, for the celebration of Jesus' birth, and to my final retirement that is out of this world. But I'm not worried about the time here and now. Solomon was right in many ways. Worrying about things here on earth is truly meaningless. God has us all in his own time capsule. God has us as planned in his capsule. As for me, I say, come on, Jesus, I'm ready to go. But if you need me here, I'm ready to stay, too. I'm not in any hurry to go. As Kenny Chesney once said in the song, everybody wants to go to heaven. We don't want to go today. <coughs> well, I agree. But when it's time, I'll be ready to fly away. How about you? Do you know whom you have believed in? We're going to sing that song in just a little bit as we close. But while we're waiting, let's remember what he did for us as we're about to go to Holy Communion. As we prepare for that, let's turn to 2086 in the faith we sing. And we'll sing together, open our eyes more. And I'll let Crystal play that while I prepare the communion tape. So sing along. 2086 in the Thank you. 
Facebook, and we'll celebrate Holy Communion. We're all invited to this table because it's Christ's table. This is Christ's table. It's not a stumbling block that I can think of that would celebrate, that would separate anybody from, from the love of God and Christ. God's grace clears the way for all of us. So let us humbly seek to live in peace and grace with all. Everybody is always invited to the table as it was in the United Methodist Church and in it as it is in the Global Methodist Church. Everybody is always invited to the table. Let's pray together that prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your mind. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of need. Forgive us this prayer. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we pray this praise, I pray this prayer of thanksgiving for all of us, Creator of heaven and earth. We come before you with thankful hearts on the night before Jesus died. He invited his disciples to come to the table and partake of the bread and the cup. Symbols of the new covenant soon to be written in his blood. They represent to us the body and the blood of Christ that was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. On that last night, Jesus was with his disciples, and he left them with this tangible remembrance that we have continued to share to this day as we remember him. We remember the mighty acts of Jesus Christ, and we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, joining with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry of all the Lord, as we remember Him at this table. In Christ's name we pray. We remember that he, as He gathered with His disciples at that table, even with Judas, the betrayer, he took a loaf of bread and he took it and he broke it. He said, this represents my body. Broke it for you. For the forgiveness of your sins. And you take of this bread. Remember me. I have forgiven your sins. And then with the, with the same token, he took the cup. He said, this, is, this represents my blood. Lord, that I shed for you. When you drink of this cup, remember me. So we do that. We do this in remembering Jesus and what he did for us. We do this as we come to the first week of Advent and we remember and we draw closer to him realizing what has been written, what has been done through the ages is true. Jesus went to the cross for all of us, and he would have done it for just one of us. But he did it. He did it for love. He did it for us. So this table is open. Now you're all welcome to come forward. And uh, you want to step down there, Gary? And we'll hand through this. Actually, let's step back up here. <laughs> <laughs> I forget where I am. Doing the two steps. So, yeah, the body of Christ broke for you, Crystal. And the blood of Christ is shed for you, Crystal. How do you The body of Christ broke for you. And the blood of Christ was shed for you, Crystal.
see the resolving sword. So, here, the body of Christ broke through. thanks for this holy mystery and what you've given yourself to us. Please be with us and direct us. Let us go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to, for others. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now let's turn to 714 in the hymnal. Do you know why we cover these things over like this? Just to share a little tidbit. <coughs> it's tradition. It was done for the flies. Yeah. It was originally done for the flies. I was going to say that, but <laughs> that's all right. Because we have to do that two times. <laughs> right. So we don't have a fly problem in here. We might have a mice problem. But we're, yeah. and we're working on that. So we continue the tradition, although we don't necessarily need to. That's a good one.
as Jesus worked in your minds and your hearts, to each of you and between you and to each other. Lord, we thank you for being with us. Now we ask you to be with us as we go out into this world. Ask us to know that you're with us. Ask us to be in tune with what you have us do. We ask you to show us what to, what to say and what not to say, how to act, and how to not react to some things that we be faced with. Lord, be with us. Help us know how to spread your word best. Help us to reach others for you and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now our benediction, beloved God, keep awake, stay alert, pay attention to God and work all around you. And now go from this place, blessed to be bowled over by hope and shocked out of your complacency to watch and wait and join in the work of bringing God's dream for all creation to life. Amen. Amen. Go now in peace to love and share the world. And go bowling for God.